Let's take a few more shots at this butterfly. As you can see, Vera is quite accurate. And the reason is the ant was distracted as it was taking a selfie. Classic problem, can't rely on your friends all the time. So the ant has a selfie stick up here, go into his camera phone right there, and that distance, the length of his selfie stick, is D. Okay, now the bullet is moving forward, so let's draw the ant and the bullet at three different times. Right. We know it's moving forward, these are this, just three snapshots of time, here, here, and here. And I'll go ahead and redraw the ant here with his selfie stick and his camera phone like that. And uh, in the middle, I'll just draw the ant. We won't draw the whole thing. So what we're gonna think about is what happens when he takes the picture. We know this sends out a flash of light and that flash of light comes down like that. A little wave comes down, bounces off the ant and then goes back up to the camera. So we're thinking about the time it takes delta T for the light to go down and back up. So the ant takes a selfie, and we're going to call that time delta t. And I'm going to put a p subscript on it. We'll get into y later. That's delta t p. So all we got to do is think about this in both the bullet frame and in the lab frame. So in the bullet frame, all right, in the bullet frame, delta t, and again, I'll put a p on it in the bullet frame, is what? Well, it's just d equals vt. Right, in this frame, I was just sitting here, and it went down D, and it went back up D. Right, so in this case, the total distance is 2D. So it's 2D um, divided by C, where C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That was easy. Now let's look at it in the uh, lab frame. So this is if you and I were watching this light. What would we see? We would see basically the light go off and reflect off the ant's pretty shiny face and go up to the camera. All right. Well, clearly it goes further. If this were a ball, if the camera threw a ball down and the ball bounced back up, that'd be easy to explain. But say the camera gives the ball a y component of velocity down, but in our frame of reference, it also gives it an x component of velocity. But that's not how light works. And the way light works, uh, we know, based on the Michelson-Morley experiment, we know that uh, the ant sees light going at one speed and we see light going at the same speed. We see the light cover more distance, but it also is going at C. And that's where weird things happen. So let's calculate the weird things. So let's now calculate delta T in the uh, lab frame. And you can see we need this distance. We need the hypotenuse of this triangle, right? So it's going to be two times the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse over the speed, it's still just C. Okay. Two times the hypotenuse over C. So let's see, what is this hypotenuse? Well, let's see, if this, we make a right triangle here, we need that, then we would say one side is D, so D squared, and the other side is this, but we know this whole thing is C delta T. Right? So that distance is, um, I'm sorry, yeah, this is the velocity V, how fast the bullet's actually moving. Right? So it gets a distance V delta T. So that side of the triangle is, uh, or this side is one half V delta T. So we have D and one half V delta T. So it's equal to two times the square root of uh, D squared plus one half V delta T squared over C. And there's delta T on this side as well. Okay. So it's not coming out quite as simple as it is over here, is it? Well, now we gotta keep doing some algebra, keep manipulating this thing. So what I would do now is I would bring the C over here and square both sides. So I bring the C over and square both sides. So the left side becomes C squared delta t squared, 
And the right side, let's see, we're going to square the 2 to make a 4. And the square root goes away. It's going to be uh, 4 d squared. And then uh, times, we've got to square that thing underneath. The half squares to a 4, cancels a 4, plus uh, v squared delta t squared. All right. So we're solving for delta t squared. So I'm going to bring it over here and then divide by what? c squared minus v squared. Right? So that's why I'll get delta t squared is 4 d squared over, make sure I'm not making a mistake here, over uh, c squared minus v squared. Right? See, it's just algebra. It's just confusing algebra. Um, and then let's see, we'll take the square root to get delta t. Delta t equals, let's see, 2 d over the square root of c squared minus v squared. So we're just kind of making a mess, except notice delta t in terms of 2 d almost over c. Remember, 2 d over c, that was the delta t in the bullet frame, in the bullet frame, what we called the, the delta t p. So if I could just pull a c squared out of here, I'd have 2 d over c. So let's do that. Let's get that delta t is 2 d over c times 1 over the square root. And I got that c by pulling it out of here. So that's 1 minus v squared over c squared. 1 minus v squared over c squared. Okay. But then 2d over c, that was delta p. So we find that the ch difference in time in the lab frame is equal to the difference in time in the bullet frame, but times a factor, 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So we'll look at the value of this number later, but you can tell this isn't going to be 1, right? This is a velocity not equal to the speed of light. This was 24 meters per second. This is 300 million meters per second. This will be a small number, but when you subtract a small number off here, you get something a little bit less than 1, so you get something a little bit greater than 1, so they're not exactly the same. Delta t is a little bit longer than delta p. Right? So delta t in the lab frame is greater than delta t p in the bullet frame. So this is called time dilation. When you are moving with respect to an object, your time goes slower than the object. And it's not a special effect. It's not some weird computational problem. It's real. Right? So the way time flows, the rate at which time flows for different objects in different reference frames is just different. We don't notice, because if you're going slow, the difference isn't very big. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it is very real. The reason we call this one p is you could ask, well, is any frame special? Right? Which is the one that's going the fastest? And there is sort of one that's special. Um, in this case, this is called the proper frame. And the bullet and the ant are in the proper frame because the proper frame is the one where the event you're watching happens at the same place. So here we were watching the light go down and come back up and end up back where it started. In the bullet frame, it just went back to where it started. In the lab frame, it went to a different position. So certain uh, frames have this special designation. It doesn't mean the light prefers those frames, or those are where the speed of light is C. The speed of light's always C. But we do get into cases where certain frames are preferred in terms of the way you calculate values of things. So that's what the proper, the delta P proper, was all about. Okay. So next we'll look at some implications of this difference.